Ever considered how your thoughts might be distorting your reality? Cognitive distortions, these unhelpful thinking habits, can shape our perceptions and emotions in profound ways. They can cloud our judgment, tinge our experiences, and even alter our emotional responses. Understanding these patterns is the first step toward challenging and changing them. Firstly, let's dive into catastrophizing. This is a cognitive distortion where you expect the worst possible outcome in any situation, regardless of how likely it actually is. Picture this. You've just made a minor mistake at work. Instead of viewing it as a simple error, you start thinking it will lead to your dismissal. Then you'll be unable to pay your bills and eventually end up homeless. This is catastrophizing. It's like expecting a light drizzle to turn into a catastrophic flood. It's important to remember that our minds can be great storytellers, but not all stories they tell are accurate or helpful. When you catch yourself catastrophizing, take a step back, breathe, and try to assess the situation more realistically. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could really happen? And how likely is that to occur? Remember, catastrophizing can severely limit your perspective and potential. Next up, black and white thinking. This is a cognitive distortion that involves viewing things as absolutes, good or bad, right or wrong, success or failure, with no room for any middle ground or shades of gray. It's like looking at life through a lens that only sees in extremes, completely missing the nuances and subtleties that make up our complex world. Let's paint a picture. Imagine you've baked a cake for the first time, and it didn't turn out exactly as you'd hoped. Black and white thinking would have you brand yourself a failure, discounting the fact that it's your first attempt and that learning comes with trial and error. This form of thinking can be limiting and can lead to unnecessary stress and self-criticism. It's crucial to remember that life is filled with complexities and every situation, every person, every experience has its shades of gray. Be aware, this form of thinking often disregards the nuances of reality. Moving on to overgeneralization, this cognitive distortion is like watching a movie on repeat. You experience an event, and suddenly it's the preview to every future scene. Let's say you make a minor mistake at work. Instead of acknowledging it as a one-time slip-up, you start to believe you're incapable and always mess things up. You've taken a single incident and allowed it to color your entire narrative. But life isn't a movie, and one scene doesn't dictate the whole storyline. Just because you stumbled once, doesn't mean you'll trip every step of the way. Overgeneralization is like wearing tinted glasses. It alters your vision, painting everything with the same broad strokes. This can lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy, where your beliefs, however unfounded, start shaping your actions. Don't let one event define your journey. Now, let's tackle mind reading. This cognitive distortion is a classic case of assuming we know what others think without any concrete evidence. We're not talking about the stage trick here, but rather an unhelpful thinking habit that we often fall into. Imagine you're at a social gathering. You notice a friend across the room, deep in conversation. They glance your way and quickly look away. If your mind is prone to mind reading, you might instantly believe they're avoiding you or talking about you. But remember, this is an assumption, not a fact. It's just as likely they were momentarily distracted or simply caught in an engaging conversation. The truth is, we can't read minds. We can't know what others are thinking unless they tell us. Misunderstandings sprout from these assumptions, causing unnecessary stress. So the next time you find your mind slipping into mind reading, remind yourself to stick to the facts. Mind reading can lead to misunderstandings and unnecessary stress. Next, we delve into personalization. This cognitive distortion is a tricky one, as it often sneaks up when you least expect it. Picture this. You're at a party, and a friend seems distant. Instead of considering other factors, you immediately assume it's because of something you've done. You've just fallen into the trap of personalization. Personalization is blaming yourself for things that are beyond your control or attributing external events solely to your actions. It's like looking at the world through a lens where you are the central character in every scene and every event, good or bad, is a result of your actions. It's a burdensome way to live, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. But remember, 
Not everything revolves around you. Everyone has their own story, their own struggles. Don't let personalization rob you of the freedom to exist independently of other people's actions or circumstances. Personalization can make you unfairly blame yourself for events beyond your control. Let's now explore discounting the positive. This cognitive distortion is like wearing sunglasses on a sunny day. But instead of shielding your eyes, you're dimming the brightness of your accomplishments and positive experiences. Imagine you've just completed a project that's been on your to-do list for weeks. You've put in countless hours, and the final result is impressive. Yet instead of basking in the satisfaction of a job well done, your mind immediately hones in on the one minor hiccup that occurred along the way. You disregard your accomplishment, focusing only on that tiny mistake, effectively turning a sunny day into a cloudy one. This habit of discounting the positive not only prevents you from fully experiencing joy and satisfaction, but it also reinforces a negative self-image. It's like having a gold medal in your hands and saying, but it's not platinum. Remember, discounting the positive can rob you of joy and satisfaction. Now we come to emotional reasoning. This cognitive distortion can be a tricky one to navigate as it's deeply rooted in how we perceive our emotions. You see, emotional reasoning is the belief that our emotions reflect an objective reality. This means that if we feel something, we believe it must be true. For instance, imagine you're feeling anxious about a presentation. You might start to believe that you're unprepared or that you're going to fail. Even if you've put in hours of work and practice, this is emotional reasoning in action. You're letting your anxiety dictate your perception of reality rather than relying on the facts at hand. Now, it's important to remember that our emotions are influenced by our thoughts and perceptions. They're not always accurate reflections of reality. So the next time you find yourself swept away by your emotions, try to step back and evaluate the situation objectively. Emotional reasoning can make you believe your emotions reflect objective reality. Next, we unravel the should statements. This cognitive distortion is all about living in a world of should, must, and ought to. It's like having a rule book in your head that dictates how you and others should behave. For instance, you might think, I should always be successful or people must like me. If reality doesn't match these firm internal commands, it can result in feelings of guilt, inadequacy, and pressure. Imagine you've been working on a project and it didn't go as planned. A should statement might be, I should have done a better job. This kind of thinking not only puts immense pressure on you, but also dismisses the fact that everyone makes mistakes, and that's okay. It's important to remember that we're humans, not machines programmed to perfection. Should statements can lead to feelings of guilt, pressure, and inadequacy. Moving on, we tackle labeling. This cognitive distortion is like a sticky note that we slap on ourselves or others based on past behaviors or mistakes. The issue with labeling is that it's often not a fair or accurate representation. Let's consider an example. Say you flunked a test and you label yourself as a failure. This label is not just about the test anymore. It's a sweeping judgment about your entire self. It overlooks your potential for change and improvement. It forgets your successes and strengths. It's one dimensional and simplistic, reducing the complex beauty of human nature to a single word. But we are not static. We grow, we change, we learn from our mistakes. We are more than our past failures or successes. We're a work in progress. So, remember, labels are limiting. They box us in and stop us from seeing the full picture. Labeling can hinder change and growth. Finally, we explore jumping to conclusions. It's a common cognitive distortion where we make assumptions without sufficient evidence. This can happen in two main ways, mind reading and fortune telling. Mind reading is when we believe we know what others are thinking while fortune-telling is predicting the future negatively. Let's consider an example. You send a friend a message, and they don't respond immediately. You might jump to the conclusion that they're ignoring you, or that they're upset with you. In reality, they may just be busy or have not noticed your message yet. This kind of thinking can create unnecessary stress and misunderstandings. Similarly, if you have a job interview, and start thinking you failed before even getting the results, your fortune-telling. 
you're predicting a negative outcome without any concrete evidence. This way of thinking, jumping to conclusions, can lead to misguided assumptions and decisions. It's crucial to challenge these thoughts and focus on evidence-based reasoning. In summary, recognizing these cognitive distortions is crucial to challenging and changing them. From catastrophizing to jumping to conclusions, these unhelpful thinking habits can be reshaped with techniques like cognitive restructuring and mindfulness. Remember, you have the power to reshape your thoughts and perceptions for a healthier, happier mind.